This is the Mama Fit Podcast. This podcast is dedicated to all those mamas out there that want to fit a workout in a day or want to fit in a moment of bliss. Or hey, you want to fit into those skinny jeans. Dana Dieters is the host of Mama Fit Podcast. She's a mother of two beautiful girls, a wife, an entrepreneur. Her passion became her profession when she had a wake-up call about 15 years ago. With the support of others and a positive attitude, she was able to overcome the hurdles in her life. This mama strives to wake up and conquer each day to make it better than the day before. Her passion for business and education to others is what drives this mama to be the best version of Mama Fit. With Dana's background, she hopes to help you with your business, health and fitness needs, family time in the kitchen and give you motivation and inspiration to tackle your day and most importantly to help you fit in your mama fit time well welcome back to the mama fit podcast thanks again for coming back and enjoying another episode i'm actually getting really good at doing this twice in the same month yeah So hopefully this this keeps on happening where I keep putting out more content because it is beyond crazy on how busy my schedule gets. And this is the last thing that I actually do, which I apologize. So I'm going to try really hard. That's going to be my challenge is to get this at least do it every other week because right now it's like really random. So thanks again for coming back. And we're actually going to talk about how not only changing your mindset will actually change your body. So we are hitting that time of the year where we end up wanting to stay inside, don't go anywhere because it's cold outside. Well, anyway, in the Midwest, that's kind of what we do. Um, and that just seems like that's the worst thing to do. Um, so that means that we need to put our positive reinforcements to work. When it comes to positive self-talk, it really needs to be done on a daily, hourly, even minute basis. And let me tell you, it takes a lot of practice, but believe me, it really does help with those winter blues. I have to admit, I've not always been the most positive person. Actually, I was very negative at one point in my life. But with a lot of practice, with daily affirmations, taking care of myself, I've really began to live the positive life. And don't get me wrong, I do have moments like everybody else, but every day gets better because I've learned the tools to feel good, always using those positive thoughts to change my day. And if you've actually read my children's book, it's all about that. I wanted to start kids off early in their life to have those positive thoughts and know that that will change their day if they have those good feelings. So I'm here to help you with not only your fitness, weight loss, and health goals, but also your mental wellness. To me, this is the most important aspect and it does get pushed to the side. So when you start any new journey, don't worry much about how you're going to get from A to B. It just means to start walking in the direction of your goal and dreams. Get started by doing whatever you can, however small, and then do the next thing. But take the necessary steps to make it happen. No goal will happen if you don't take that first initial step. Some things in life can bring us down and lead us into a negative attitude. So Let's fix some of those things that we have control of. So stress is number one. This is the big one that can weigh people down and become more negative. It can not only cause health issues, but it also can make you irritable and unhappy. So not a fun person to be around. So try to keep a balanced life is key. Manage your stress and you'll fix almost everything. So some activities can help with stress would be rolga, breathing breaks, mini meditations throughout the day, exercise, prayer, self-talk, positive talk, exercise, anything that moves your body and breathing is going to help out. I even think even listening to music for me is also a big one as I'm walking. I like walking and listening to music. And of course, exercise always helps, but that's kind of my routine anyway. So it's not something that I have to add in. I always do it anyway. All right. Another one. And I can say this is huge sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep at night, try taking small naps. 
And cat naps can vary from 30 to 90 minutes, probably no later because it will probably affect your sleep at night. Um, I don't get enough sleep because of my child wakes us up and she's really bad sleeper. We haven't actually <laughs> slept since we had kids because our other child just started sleeping through the night when our, our uh, one-year-old was born. So let's do the math here. That's about six and a half years since we've actually had a full night's sleep. So I feel like some days my brain doesn't act like it should. And sometimes that creates more stress and more tired. And I feel mentally exhausted. So sleep appears to be very essential to improve and maintain energy levels, immune system effectiveness, mental and emotional clarity and overall or overall well-being. When you feel good, you function better. Sleep deprivation can also play a role in anxiety or depression. So if you have a touch of those, you really need to focus on getting more sleep. If you're struggling with any of these things and you're not getting enough sleep, less than eight hours a night, aim for to improve sleep first before trying any other life strategies. All right, the next one is if you respect your own boundaries, people will respect you. So if you have that, yes, I will do it, yes, I will do that kind of mentality and you don't set your own boundaries, you are going to create more of that stress and it's going to take away from time for you. So I have a big problem with this because I am a terrible people pleaser and I spend way too much time and effort trying to make everyone happy and most of the time it takes a big beating on me. So I'm trying to get better at this one as well. So practicing building self-awareness, discover what you're willing to do and what you don't want to do. So sometimes you might need to write a list of stuff that you really like to do and what you have been asked to do that you don't really want to do. So you can get more clarity on the things that are exhausting your mind. So practicing building self-awareness, discover what you're willing to do and what you don't want to do. Start putting this into practice by saying no when something doesn't resonate or align with who you really are. Be who you are and not what someone else wants you to be. The fact of being you is the best thing. People might get mad at first, but eventually most will come to respect you and, and you won't secretly resent them anymore. So there's peace there. The next one is be yourself and don't apologize for it. This expands on the people pleasing piece. I would have totally fit this one a few years back, but I really love who I am today and will continue to speak my mind and be the person I am meant to be. So many of us, me included, grew up focusing on what other people or society thought we should do, start checking in with ourselves and about who we really are, despite circumstances and outside influences. What do you really love? What do you long to do? How would you love to live? In whatever way you can, start shifting your life toward living more and authentically and watch what happens. And lastly, stop worrying about what others think. Most of the time, they're not even thinking about you. <laughs> Sorry. So put more attention on you and your needs. All right. Now it's time to develop our positive attitude. Here are some ways to help you create a positive attitude that will bring peace into your life. Number one, listen to your internal dialogue. This is a big one and we don't do it very often. You got to be quiet. You got to really think about it. What does your body feel when you are saying those thoughts out loud? Does it feel good? Does it feel kind of icky? You need to start listening to what you feel like and what your mind does afterwards. Here's an exercise you can do. Divide one or two more sheets of paper into two columns. And for a few days, jot down on the left column all the negative thoughts that come into your head. Rewrite each thought in a positive way in the second column. Practice doing this in your mind until it becomes a habit. So instead of saying, I never look good, I will be fat forever. Say this instead, even if you feel it's not really accurate. I am beautiful the way I am, and I deserve to take care of myself. Once you start this habit of saying positives, you will eventually start believing it. 
and your body will start doing amazing things. You will actually start feeling better. You will want to take care of yourself and do the things that actually help you get to your goals. Pay attention to yourself more. Your thoughts, actions, the words you speak, you may realize that you're putting negative attention to the wrong areas of your life. Once you realize what you're putting out there, you can totally fix it and remain positive in your life. You will make those positive changes. I promise. I had a client who always talked about her stomach and how big it was. And she always look at the mirror and say, I hate this part of my body. Every time I trained her, I finally told her the truth that she would never get that stomach she wanted when she continuously put so much negative attention on it. I then referred to the book, The Secret by Rhonda Barn. I try to refer this book every single time because I feel like it's all about law of attraction. What you put your attention on will come back to you. So if you're always saying the things that, that you hate, example of the, my client's stomach or how you feel, you won't ever change. Negative thoughts will always feed off those negatives and things will just remain the same. But if you want to change it, turn your words around, make positive changes. More positives will create more positives. Here are some tips that I like to coach my clients with, especially when they're having these struggles, being stuck where they're at. We try to work on daily positive affirmations. So start each morning with five good things about how you look. And it's not all about looks, but I'm just having an example here of if you are having a bad time with what you look like, these simple strategies will help you conquer that. I have a rundown of things that I like to include, and some of these do feel silly, like I said before, but they will become more natural and you'll actually believe it. And it's amazing how when you say these words, you just feel better. So I have a rundown. These are the words. I am beautiful is one. I am a great mommy. I am a strong, determined woman. I take care of myself with proper exercise and nutrition. I love myself. Allow love into your life. The ability to love and be loved is the most basic human trait. We all want that. We chase love in many directions, but yet rarely feel fulfilled. Accept that being loved begins and ends with you. It is hard to receive love if you don't love yourself. People can say, I love you and do nice things for you. But if you don't love yourself, it still won't make you feel content inside on a long-term basis. Another good feel is laugh more. Laughing at yourself, finding humor in the simplest things. Laughter is the most powerful mood elevator. If you're feeling down, read some jokes, watch some funny movies, or just act silly once in a while with your kids. At times, let yourself see through a child's genuine eyes and simplify it. That's all you have to do. Sometimes I watch YouTube videos when I need a good laugh or even go on Pinterest and look at some really funny um, videos or videos or memes. I think some of those just crack me up. So it's another way to just get into a better mood and don't wait on what you want to do. There is never a good time for anything. Do something you wanted to do will not only help you feel alive, but it will also feel accomplished in life. It can be a reason to wake up in the morning, figure out how you can start now by starting small. There is no reason just to start small. That's, that's like the best thing, baby steps. And you'll feel so glad that you did. So just get out there and do whatever you want to do, but just make it happen. Just like this quote, if you are always wishing to make something happen, you will never get there. If you're always wishing to lose more weight, be thinner or be fit, then most likely it won't happen if you don't make any progress. You can't keep wishing. You always have to do something to make that situation happen. So take action. You have to eat better, exercise regularly to make your goals. Wishes don't come true by themselves. It's up to you to fulfill them. And Another thing, I hate to say this, but fast results don't always work. So losing weight and becoming healthier isn't something that just happens overnight. It takes time and effort. 
as well as setbacks. We have setbacks while we're doing something most often because they're learning lessons. What did you learn from those setbacks? You're always supposed to remember that they're not always bad. They're just lessons that we're supposed to learn from it. And then we make better choices the next time. So don't get too hard on yourself if you only lost five pounds in a month, because guess what? Those are realistic pounds. If you keep your expectations and goals realistic, you are far more likely to achieve them by if you expect superhuman objectives from yourself. All right. The next one is procrastination. Who has said these lines before? I will exercise tomorrow. I will eat better after this party. I will have one more drink and then that's it. I will start my workout regimen on Monday. If you've uttered any of those statements similar to the examples that I just said, then you're most likely procrastinating. You won't get anywhere if you keep cutting yourself short and putting off your weight loss plans. Instead, say, today is the day to get started on my weight loss endeavor. I will make better food choices today. I will exercise today, even if it's five minutes. I will drink water right now and actually do it. Don't wait until it's too late. I understand weight loss or any fitness goals by no means is easy. There is work in the actual word. It involves exercise, sweating, and eating food that you're not used to. When you choose to lose weight, you should be ready to go out of your comfort zone If you are not ready for these things, then you won't lose the pounds that weigh your body down. The next one is what I hear a lot, deprived and missing out. And I get this one a lot. What comes to mind when we think about losing weight? Is it no more sweets, no more drinking, no more smoking, no more regular nights out, no more pop, no more processed food? It really doesn't help if you consistently think that you're depriving yourself or missing out on the fun things in life. The longer it takes you to accept that you need to give up certain things, the longer it will be for you to start losing weight. When you lose weight and become healthier, you don't miss out on life. You get to experience life in a whole new light. You got to remember, food is just fuel for our body. Let's just say if your body needed premium fuel to run like it should, you would not put regular fuel in a Bentley. All right, there's another one we get quite a bit as trainers. It's a consistent yo-yo dieting. Dieting is not a long-term solution to weight loss. If you don't agree with me, then you are on the road to self-destruction. The hard part is you will most likely end up experiencing yo-yo weight, gaining water weight back, feeling sorry for yourself, and have all those emotions that come back after you've gained the weight back. If you want to lose and keep off the weight, you should accept that you need to make a lifelong change and commit to having better eating habits. And I really focus on in my practice is I focus on more nutrient dense food versus dieting. We want to build balanced meals that are going to cut fat versus talk about diet food. We don't diet. That's the thing. It's like you have to make a lifestyle change. So you want to create this whole positive life around food and building meals that you actually enjoy that don't feel like diet food. And that means find the important reasons to change your healthy lifestyle. Your reasons for losing weight may serve you as motivation in times when the going gets tough. Your motivation can be more than just weight loss, but also reasons like sleeping better at night, keeping your cholesterol down, regulate your blood pressure, just feeling good and moving better. That is why you need to have a reason that you will find absolutely important. That will be your motivation to keep going when those times get tough. I have clients write their goals down to keep them where they can see it at all times, every day. I have one client that will actually use a dry erase marker and put her goals on the bathroom mirror for a reminder. Your reason should be for something that will last a lifetime, not just for a certain season or an event or for someone else. Because once that person is gone or the season or the event has passed, you will be tempted to go back to those old habits. You might end up gaining back the weight you lost. Trying to lose weight is hard for most people. I believe that making excuses and spewing out 
complaints does not make it easier on anyone. And hey, I do it too. But in fact, excuses make it harder for us to be honest about our situation. Complaints just make you appear like you don't want to take responsibility for your own well-being. And lastly, you are the driver in your life. Take that wheel and drive it on the path you want to lead. This is the only body given to you, and you were meant to take care of it inside and out. That's all I got today. Have a wonderful day, and thanks again for listening. Thanks so much for spending your time with the Mama Fit Podcast. Dana is so happy to share her tips and tricks with you. If you loved this podcast, we'd be so happy if you could share this episode with your friends and family. Also, if you have time, please leave us a review of your honest thoughts and reflections of the podcast on iTunes or our app. We'd be so grateful. If you have any topic or suggestion that you want answered, leave those in the comments below and make sure that you fit in your Mama Fit time.